So on Wednesday, we were talking about work energy theorem, okay? And that work is a change in mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is made up of both kinetic energy and potential energy, and both can change at the same time. All right, so if work is done, the object is either speeding up, gaining potential energy by moving upwards, or both at the same time. Okay, so this first question we had here was talking about a force of 150 newtons that was acting on a nine kilogram mass, lifting it to a height of five meters. And the first part of the question asked, what's the work done on the mass by this force? Okay, that's probably the easiest part of the question, right? Because we've got um, our nine kilogram mass here. We know there's 150 newtons worth of force doing the work, okay, upwards. So we can just go force times distance and figure out how much work is being done. The force was 150 newtons and that was over five meters. So there was 750 joules worth of mechanical energy change or work being done in this problem. Okay, everybody all right with that so far? Okay, so part B says, what's the change in the gravitational potential energy? All right, well, I can calculate change in gravitational potential energy by just doing this, okay? EP final minus EP initial. And I would assume then that the initial energy was zero. Generally, you lift things from the ground, okay? So we would assume that that's zero. And all I would have to do is say that the final potential energy is mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. So that would be nine times 9.81 times five meters. Right? That came out to 441.45 joules. Okay, 750 joules of work was done, but the potential energy only changed by 441.45 joules. So there's energy left over. What's that gonna change? Yeah, it's going to change the kinetic energy, all right? So whatever is left over out of the 750 joules is going to be, okay, what's left over for kinetic energy. So EK in this one, okay, is going to be solved for by essentially this formula. Mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic, all right? Everybody with me there? Potential plus kinetic would give me mechanical. So I know the mechanical change was 750. I know the potential change was 441. So all I would do is go EM minus EP, and that would give me the kinetic energy. So 750 minus 441.45 will give me um, 300 and... Uh, I'll calculate it just because I don't want to embarrass myself. So 750 minus 441.45. All right, 308.55. Okay, so that's how much the kinetic energy of this object changes by. Those two numbers add up to 750, which is the amount of work that we did and the amount the mechanical energy changed by. All right. Now, question number three says, draw a free body diagram for the forces on the mass in question two. Well, we know the 150 is acting up. What's pulling down? Force yeah, force of gravity. Okay, and I can calculate that because I know the mass and I know the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so if I take uh, nine and multiply it by 9.81, I'm going to get that the force of gravity is 88.29 newtons. Okay, so calculate the net force acting on the mass. Now, something we need to notice here before we do that. When I calculated the final potential energy, I went mass times gravity times height. So I took this and multiplied it by 9.81. Essentially, I took this number because that's m times g, and I multiplied it by 5. Everybody okay with that? All right. So this last part here says calculate the net force acting on the mass. Okay, so we'll calculate that. Okay, F net in this case will be 150 minus 
150. 50. Okay. Minus our answer there from the last one. All right. So there's my net force, 61.71 newtons. Now, if I multiply that net force by the distance, what am I going to get for a number? I predict 308.55. Wasn't that the kinetic energy we figured out in the last question? Okay, so here's how this works. To change the potential energy of something only requires me to lift it at a constant velocity, which means it requires no net force. That means that whatever force is left over, the net force is changing the kinetic energy. Okay, because what does a net force cause an object to do? A net force causes an acceleration, okay? And an acceleration is a change in velocity. And a change in velocity means a change in kinetic energy, all right? So your net force is always the thing that's going to cause a change in kinetic energy. I can cause a change in potential energy without a net force, but I can't cause a change in kinetic energy without one, all right? Everybody follow me there, okay? Because net force causes changes in velocity. All right, that's what number three is meant to show you, okay? It's just that, yeah, we got these differences in forces here. Differences in those forces cause different changes in energy. All right, this is very much like the question we did near the end of the day on Wednesday, except the one we did involved pushing something up a ramp. This time it's pushing something down a ramp. So a 1,500 kilogram car is pushed down a 15 meter long ramp by a force of 450 newtons. At the starting point, the car is moving at 1.2 meters per second and is three meters above the bottom of the ramp. Assuming there's no friction, calculate how fast the car will be going at the bottom of the ramp, All right? So this is a work energy theorem question, okay? There's two ways to solve it. One much shorter than the other. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time, see if you can figure that out. Okay, remember it's a work energy theorem question, works a change in mechanical energy, works force times distance, okay? There's more than one way to solve this problem. Okay, so we have this ramp, okay? And we know that it's three meters high because they tell us that the car, when it's at the top, is three meters above the bottom of the hill, okay? Uh, they also tell us that initially it's moving at 1.2 meters per second. Um, and we're told that the mass is 1,500 kilograms. All right. Um, they want us to calculate the speed of the car at the bottom of the ramp, All right? So I'm going to solve this the quick way first, okay? And the quick way to solve this is using work energy theorem. That is, work is a change in mechanical energy, all right? At the top, this car has both kinetic and potential energy. So initially, it has kinetic and potential. But at the end here, it would only have kinetic because it's at the bottom of the ramp, all right? So I'm going to say then that my um, final, sorry, we'll go final potential plus final kinetic Okay, like we always do, uh, minus, sorry, not equals, minus our initial, so EP initial plus EK initial, okay? And we said we're not going to have any of that, right? So to solve for the work, I need to do this operation here. So that's going to look like this. One half MVF squared minus M times G times HI plus one half MVI squared, All right? When I plug in my numbers, that's going to be one half times 1,500 times, or sorry, um, sorry, looking for, sorry, I'm looking for how much work is done? No, looking for speed at the bottom of the ramp. Okay. Assuming there's no friction, what speed would the car be going? Right. Okay, so the other thing I need to do here is I also have to do this. That, whoop, put the eraser down, but not down there. Okay, I also have to figure out how much work is done. Okay, and I have to go work is force times distance in order to do that. Okay, because the work here, if I'm going to solve for VF, that's what I'm looking for here. I need to know work, I need to know this term, 
and this term. Everybody all right with that? Okay, they told me that the ramp is uh, 15 meters long. What did they say it was? Yeah, 15 meters long. So I'm just going to go 450 newtons, okay, times 15 meters. And that'll give me the amount of work done. Okay, so there's 6,750 joules worth of work being done here. Okay, now that I know that, okay, now I can solve for VF. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this over here. Okay, I'm going to take this whole thing, which represents my, my initial mechanical energy, and I'm going to bring it over to this side. Everybody okay with that? Okay, because if I take the work and I add my initial energy, that should tell me what my final energy is. Agreed? Okay, so I'm going to go work, okay, plus mghi um, plus one half mvi squared. And that's going to equal one half mvf squared. Then I'm going to divide both sides by half of m, because I just want vf by itself there. Okay, and I got to do one last thing. Square root. Okay, so this ends up looking a lot like the roller coaster questions you would have done last year. Okay, except I've got work in here as well. All right, 6,750 joules plus 1,500 times 9.81 times uh, 3 meters, the height, plus 1 half times 1,500 times, uh, was it 1.2? 1.2 squared, okay, divided by 1 half times 1,500, okay? This should tell me how fast the car is going at the bottom of the ramp. Come on. Okay, so we're going to have our answer first, okay, plus 1,500 times 9.81 times 3 plus 0.5 times 1500 times 1 1.2 squared. Okay, divide that by 750, that's half times 1500, and then square root it. Did I mess up a number somewhere in there? Oh, instead of adding it, I multiplied it. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, well, I'll start that all over again. Stupid. Okay, 6750 plus 1500 <laughs> times 9.81 times 3 okay, um, plus 0.5 times 1500 times 1 1.2 squared okay, divided by 750. That's going to be a much more reasonable number. All right, so at the bottom of the ramp, it'll be moving at 8.3 meters per second. Okay, because of A, it rolled down the ramp, and B, somebody pushed it down the ramp as well. All right, so it converted its potential energy into kinetic, plus all the extra work that was done in pushing it down the ramp. All right, is that making sense to people? Now, the second way to do this is quite a bit more involved. Okay. It would involve finding all the forces and putting them all together. Okay, so I would have the work done here, okay, by the force and the distance. And then I would also have to have the work done by F parallel. So I'd have to calculate F parallel, okay, and locate all these forces. But in order to calculate F parallel, I've got to find the angle of the ramp. Okay, like there's a lot more steps to do if I want to use forces, 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 forces. Okay, whereas if I'm just using work energy theorem, I can get through it a lot quicker. Okay, it's one thing to remember as opposed to okay, I got to remember to calculate this, then I got to remember to calculate that, and so on and so on. Okay. All right, try this one. 
Okay, similar to what we just did, okay, but slightly different context. Okay, I see a few people who are stuck, so I'm just gonna kind of walk through the first little bit of this, see if I can get you going. All right, um, so we have the conveyor. The conveyor is essentially a ramp. Okay, um, at the top of the ramp, okay, we have this uh, 200 kilogram crate. Okay, we know that at the top of the ramp, the crates are moving with an initial velocity of point. 75 meters per second. And we know that they are 2.5 meters above the bottom. Right? When they get to the bottom, we want to know how fast they're going. Well, at the bottom, they're only going to have what kind of energy? They're only going to have kinetic. There'll be no potential there. Okay? So again, we want to go to this idea that work is the change in mechanical energy. So that's going to mean the work done okay, is going to be um, our m times g times h final plus uh, 1 half mvf squared minus mghi plus 1 half mvi squared. Okay, We can say that those are bracketed even though the half, they don't have to be. Now, is there going to be more or less mechanical energy at the bottom of the ramp compared to the top? It says there's a frictional force on the ramp. What does friction do? It takes energy away, right? You have to do work against friction. So there's going to be sound and heat and all that other stuff. So there's actually going to be less mechanical energy at the bottom of the ramp because we're going to have to do work against 150 newtons worth of friction okay, over the entire length of this ramp. Right now, we don't know what that length is, but we can find it because we know the ramp is angled at 15 degrees. Okay, so this work here is the work being done against the force of friction. Okay, so it's force of friction times distance. The distance is the length of the ramp. Okay, we know all this other stuff, so we can solve for what we're looking for, which is that term there. Okay, we're looking for the final speed at the bottom of the ramp knowing there's going to be less mechanical energy at the bottom because this number here, even though it's work, will it be positive or negative? Work done against friction would be, from the box's point of view, negative. It's going to lose mechanical energy to friction. In the last one, this number was positive because someone pushed the car down the ramp. It added energy on. In this case, the work has to be negative because it's going to be taken away. It won't be going as fast at the bottom of the ramp as it would be if the ramp was frictionless. All right, I'll give you a few more minutes, see if you can finish it from there. Okay, so first thing we have to do here, guys, is we have to find out how long the ramp is. And that's just simple geometry. We know the angle, we know the opposite side. We're looking for the hypotenuse, okay? So we're gonna use the sine of 15 degrees equals uh, 2.5 meters, the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, which is the length of the ramp. Okay, So the hypotenuse will equal 2.5 meters divided by the sine of 15 degrees. Okay, So if we go 2.5 okay, divided by the sine of 15, right, we'll have the length of our ramp being 9.66 okay, uh, meters. All right, now that we know the length of the ramp, we know the distance over which friction acts. So we can calculate the amount of energy lost or work done against friction over the course of the thing sliding down the ramp. Okay, and that's one of the numbers that we need to know. So we're gonna calculate the work done against the force of friction okay, by simply going force of friction times D. So that'll be our 150 Newtons times our 9.66 meters. And it was, it was 150, right? Yeah. Okay, so times 150 meters. All right, so we are going to lose 1448.9 joules worth of mechanical energy to the force of friction on the way down the ramp. So.
Okay, so that's going to be a negative number because the force of friction would have also been a negative force. All right, again, work isn't isn't vector. This is saying we're losing that much energy, not gaining it. We're doing this much work against friction. All right, so now we're going to go back to this idea that work is the change in mechanical energy. So we said before that means m times g times h final plus one half mv final squared uh, minus m times g times h initial plus one half mv initial squared. Now. Since at the end of this question, we are at the bottom of the ramp, are any of these zero? Which one, Kenny? The final potential is zero. Okay. Since the final height is zero, that whole term will be zero. That saves me a little bit of time. I am trying to find Vf. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the initial mechanical energy all as one piece over to the other side. So I'm going to have work minus mghi plus one half mvi squared equals one half mvf squared. Then I'm going to divide both sides by half of m. Okay, sorry, that should be plus. Sorry, not minus, plus. Okay, um, and then I'm going to square root. Okay, that'll give me Vf. So it's the same manipulation I did in the last question, except this time, instead of work being positive, work is going to be negative because I'm doing work against friction instead of having work done on the box pushing it down the ramp. Okay, so that's going to mean then that we will have the square root of negative 1448.9 joules, okay, plus 1500, or no, sorry, it was 200 kilograms, not 1,500, 200 kilograms, times 9.81, times the initial height, which we were told was 2.5 meters, okay, um, plus our uh, one-half times 200 times, how fast they move? 0.75 meters per second, okay, and then we divide that all by one-half times 200, and then we square root the whole thing. Okay, everybody follow my workings there? All right, so we are going to take that number, we are going to make it negative, okay, and we are going to uh, add it to 200 uh, times 9.81 times 2.5 plus um, 0.5 times 200 times 0.75 squared. And then we're going to divide that by 100, because that's what half of 200 is. And then we're going to square root it. Okay, so at the bottom of the ramp, it'll be moving at 5.9 meters per second. And I heard a bunch of people saying that's what they got as an answer. So if that's what you got as an answer, good job, smarty pants. You know what you're doing. If you didn't get it, not a big deal. We still got time to figure out how all this stuff works. Okay. All right, questions on this one? Ed. Yes, you can. Okay, any other questions on how that one worked? Okay, so we've done two now, and have they both worked very similar? Okay, we both we solved them both using works to change in energy. All we did was solve for one of the many little things that ends up being in that equation. Okay. The only difficult thing really is figuring out whether the work is positive or negative. Okay. If I'm pushing it down the ramp, then the work is positive. Okay. If I'm adding energy, if I'm doing something that makes it seem like I'm putting energy into the system, the work is positive. If it's friction, work's negative. Okay. It's going to be losing energy to the drag of friction. Okay. okay. Now, I've got to show you a video before we do this one. How many people have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? Okay. It's awesome. Okay. Okay. All the Indiana Jones movies are awesome, except Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which was just dumb. But okay, so the round stone rolls down this ramp and through the tunnel, okay, towards Indiana Jones. Okay, the round stone is a mass of 400 kilograms. Okay, from a physics perspective, we want to figure out what height it would have to be dropped from. Like, how, what's how high is the top of the ramp essentially? If it rolls 30 meters against a frictional force of 800 newtons and was moving at four and a half meters per second when it sealed shut the temple, which we would assume to be the bottom 
of the ramp. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how tall is the ramp if at the bottom of the ramp, the rock's moving at four and a half meters per second and worked against a force of friction of 800 newtons over a distance of 30 meters, right? So this one's actually a little easier than the last two we did, okay? It's got a little, a bit fewer numbers in it, okay? So give that one a try. 